This video is to show you how to properly use a burner. In this case, we have a Tyrol burner, a Tyrol burner, but Bunsen burners are often widely used. The difference between a Tyrol burner and a Bunsen burner is that a Bunsen burner will have a knob on the side, whereas a Tyrol burner has a valve on the bottom. If you look at the Bunsen burner, there are multiple components that you need to know. First is the chimney. The chimney is threaded and it can open up and air can come into the chimney. There is a gas inlet. There is a gas valve at the bottom. There's the base. And then the top is the spreader made of brass. The burner needs to be hooked up to a gas jet. So a gas jet is a gas source that's usually hooked up to a laboratory table. In order to use a gas jet, there's a valve. When the handle is perpendicular, either here or here, it is off. So whenever the handle is perpendicular to the jet, then the gas source is going to be off. To open it, you need to put the gas source or the handle parallel to the jet, and that opens the valve. A good starting point for operating a burner is making sure that the chimney at the top is completely closed and then the valve at the bottom is also completely closed and then opened a half turn and that'll open uh, the burner just enough that the gas can travel from the gas jet through the hose into the inlet and then up the chimney okay so in order to hook up the burner I need a hose that pushes on the inlet and so you just push it so that it fits over a few ribs you don't want to push it too tightly because what that could do is it could split the hose you just want to make sure that it's a good seal and you want to do the same thing for the gas jet to ignite the burner you need some type of ignition source i'm just going to be using a stick lighter and so i want to turn on the gas at the source because i've already turned the valve on the bottom a half turn so I turn the go the turn the gas on at the source and light it at the top there we go and so when it lights because i don't have any air coming into the chimney because the chimney is completely closed it is going to be a luminous flame an orange flame that's not very hot Whenever you have an orange flame, that shows us that we have an incomplete combustion, and what's making that orange flame is the byproducts of incomplete combustion burning up. So this could be uh, soot, smoke, or any uh, incomplete combustion products like carbon monoxide that are burning, creating that orange luminous flame. Orange luminous flames are not very hot, and they are what we call floppy. They could be very easily blown out or blown around. And so I just blew that out. I'm going to relight it. So I can adjust the flame size of the burner by adjusting the gas source at the bottom. And so if I open it, I'm going to get a bigger flame. If I close it, I'm going to get a smaller flame. Okay. So I want to start with a flame that's just a few inches tall. And then I want to make this a hotter, more efficient flame. To do that, I need to change the mixing ratio between the gas and the oxygen in the air. So to do that, I could let air into the chimney before it ignites at the top. And so when I add air, so when I open up the chimney, I'm adding air, giving it to an opportunity to mix with the gas before it gets to the top. As I turn the chimney, you'll see that the flame becomes less orange, less luminous, and more blue. Once I turn it so that it's letting in enough air to create a blue flame, um, Actually, let me turn off the lights a little bit more. We have the blue flame, and you'll notice that this flame uh, it has, does not have any orange in it, and I could also adjust the size of this flame by adjusting the gas on the bottom. I'm turning the valve on the bottom to adjust the flame size. Um, so there is one cone. On the inside of this, this uh, cone, I just have gas before it burns, and once it starts reacting with the air and it burns, it creates the flame. And so if I were hypothetically to be on the inside of this flame, uh, there, I would not be in the fire. I'd be contained in the space uh, surrounded by the flame. So on the inside of the cone, there's no flame. Um, 
And so when you go to heat something, you want to be at the top of the flame and not in the flame. I can make this burner a lot hotter by changing my mixing ratio so that I have a second inner blue cone. And so I could do that by adding more gas. So as I turn the chimney, I start to develop an inner blue cone. And that inner blue cone, you could also start to hear crackle. So I have an outer blue cone and an inner blue cone. The hottest part of the flame is the very tip of that inner blue cone. It's important to note that uh, while you have a very hot flame in normal uh, lighting settings, like with fluorescent lights, this flame is hard to see. And so I'm about to turn on the lights and just to give you a sense of how difficult this flame is to see under normal lighting conditions. So as the lights come on, you could see that the flame nearly disappears. You could hardly see it at all. And so it's important that uh, you treat all Bunsen burners as if they are lit. So it's important that Bunsen burners are not on the edge of the table and that uh, you do not reach over the Bunsen burner. And whenever you are moving Bunsen burners, or tiro burners in this case, you should grab them by the base because the base is not going to get hot. The tip, of course, will uh, stay hot for quite some time, even once it's extinguished. To extinguish this flame, I want to shut off the gas source at the bottom by turning the valve. I also want to shut off the gas at the source, the jet. And then I want to close the chimney to reset it to its original position. The very tip of the burner is made of brass and that will stay hot for quite some time. Hot brass looks the same as cold brass, and so it's important that you never touch the tip of a Bunsen burner because you don't know how recently it has been lit.